One of the problems we've got with uh, quite a bit of our sand is uh, that it is non-wetting um, and that really creates some problems um, trying to get any um, crop established on it. Coming out in the paddock and having a look at what Terry's done, he's um, covered a couple of the issues. One of, of actually getting these blowholes, leveling them out so he can get his machinery over, but also lowering them uh, potentially to get down to where he can pull clay up. But also. Um, hopefully over time uh, we'll get organic matter back into that um, soil and provide a better structure for it. The blowholes are a real problem, um, often it's um, stock, uh, particularly sheep will go up and camp on those sand hills and take the cover off and the wind starts and uh, there can be huge blowholes. If we can get cover on, on it um, and the stock off, um, you've got a, a double, double wind situation there. Main take home messages, uh, one we're looking at um, getting uh, cover onto this sand area to stop wind erosion. Secondly, to do that you really need some planning to look at nutrition so that you can get that cover to grow and maintain. And the third thing is uh, to keep that cover over that area. When we build a smudge bar, I term it as a smudge bar, there's some small little machines made with railway lines that originally were around and we took that and modified it and made it bigger with tram lines. This machine we've put two bars and we've made them solid so that we can use the hydraulics of the machine to, to, to regulate the height of them and when we've been using it we've found we've been able to not only flatten our delving areas but we've used it to pull sand a considerable distance over onto magnesia patches. Since we've had it we've learnt to use it in a lot of different ways and one of those is flattening out these big blow holes and getting some cover back on and fixing the ground so we don't have to go around them. Here we've picked on a daddy blow hole and it's going to be a bit of a challenge. What we did last year was we used biosolids. After we flattened the hills we spread the biosolids out at about I think nine tonne to the hectare. The biosolids themselves actually stabilised the sand very well and it didn't shift at all. Last year we actually had a really good result with what we've done. We've got cover on it, we're not going to put stock on it and we're just going to work on it bit by bit. What we're going to do this year though, uh, we haven't got the, the facility of biosolids because of the freight problem. We're going to get a contractor in to put clay over the sand just to hold these couple. I think it needs to be flattened, it needs the clay and it also needs the organic matter. If you think about farmers that put in say two weeks of stone rolling a year, if we can do a week or two of clay work and sand fixing work a year, it's equivalent and our farm's getting better and better. We've recovered areas and we've brought them from an area that doesn't produce anything that's still prone to wind erosion to this year we've had about half our average yield off of some of these terrible areas. Part of this whole process we have invested in machinery with a variable rate and we're actually able to put different nutrients, different trace elements on these bad areas as we go. With the variable rate it's a moving goalpost too because once you start variable rating the, the country actually gets that good. It's hard to say well that's a poor area and needs extra nutrients. I think we're actually on a winner and the last few years this area has been very productive with really good quality wheat because it is a dry area, it is a marginal area, but the produce coming out of here is really good and it makes me feel good as a farmer to have good grain that we are productive that's you know, good for our country. But the overall picture is that we're improving the country and we're getting the carbon back into the soil and we're, we're producing good food.